responsibility. I know they did some fundraisers, but if anybody wants to contribute, they may. Uh, I'm trying to think what I should say, but I'll come up with it. Uh, David was a wordsmith. Words came very easily to him. He had a, a magnetism about him, a personal magnetism. He was like magnetic. People would come to him. And he brightened up the whole area that he was with. He made friends, and everybody he met was his latest new buddy. And he had this light in him. You know how some people have charisma or uh, stage presence? He had it. And he had the gift of instantaneous poetry composition. He could make up a huge poem right on the spot, <coughs> paragraph after paragraph. And when you read the poem, some of the words he used would send you to the dictionary. What does it mean? But he knew these words. Where from? I don't know. But I read some of his poems. It's unbelievable. And then he went on poetry sites. And uh, he would win poetry of the week or poetry of the month. And it was fabulous. And uh, David loved music. The music was the whole thing. Uh, when he was about 16 years old, he wanted me to take him to a Keith Richards concert. That's the, he's a member of the Rolling Stones. So I drove him to the Meadowlands. And uh, it's the only concert I've ever been to in my whole life. So I was supposed to go back home, we lived in North Jersey, and then come back and get him. But I found a, uh, he was a scouter, uh, a scalper, and I bought a ticket for 10 bucks. And I sat way in the back in the balcony, and Keith Richards was there, and there was only a couple of thousand people in the front. And when he's with the Rolling Stones, they sell out auditoriums, but with Keith Richards alone, with just a few thousand people. And the noise was driving me nuts. And David was sitting out front with everybody else. And when he played music in his room, I would feel the door, you could feel the door vibrate. That's how, <laughs> that's how loud the music was. I, you know, I, I was always much quieter. So he had this way about him, he just loved music, and he loved to be at festivals, and he, the noise didn't bother him. And like I said, uh, he was an articulate, ma uh, magnetic person. People were drawn to him. And uh, he, he, he pub there was an article push published in, I think, 2013 that he wrote for the Morning Call, which is a Philadelphia magazine, about the Pish group. I think they call it Fish, it's P-H-I-S. And it was a beautiful article. And then two weeks before his passing, he, he was on a, a, a recording on the internet and everything else, and it was the, uh, the show of life. And it was a guy that went around Atlantic City, and he would interview people. And David was on there for quite a while. And it, it's on some of the sites that Julie had, uh, and, and whatever. And you could see he was warm, and he's smiling, and he, he introduced himself. He can establish instantaneous rapport with almost anybody he met. And that's the, the, the gift. Everybody has gifts. But it, it reminds me of something that Steve Jobs says. He was one of the richest men in the world. And at 56 years old, he knew he was dying. And he, he revisited his value. And what Steve Jobs said was that he always chased prestige and money and position and his standing in the community and his reputation. And he said if he knew what he knew now, he would be closer to the people around him, his family, his friends, and he would have done life a little differently. And by most people's standards, he was a, a booming success. But he said he made some mistakes. It's like keep people close to you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>